The SAT tests a very limited number of statistics topics. Most of these questions fall into the problem solving and data analysis portion of the math section. And most of these questions will involve some combination of the four main statistical measures, mean, median, mode, and range. If you can memorize the definitions for these four concepts, you should be able to handle most statistics questions in the SAT. There are a few other concepts that could come up, like standard deviation, margin of error, and probability, but these are rare. And since most people have learned mean, median, mode, and range at some point in middle school, we'll stick to those four ideas in this lesson on basic statistics. I have separate lessons on the other statistics topics, so make sure you subscribe to the Satel Tutoring channel for the full set of SAT statistics lessons. Let's start with mean, which is probably the most important of the four statistical measures. Confusingly, the mean is more commonly called the average, and it can be referred to as the arithmetic mean in some formal settings. You must memorize the formula for mean and average, which is to take the sum of the numbers in the data set and divide by the number of numbers in the data set. For this example, we add 17, 19, 19, 21, 23, 25, and 26 to get a total of 150. Then we divide by 7 because this data set consists of 7 numbers. We get an average of 21.42857 and so on. This may seem like a wrong answer because it's a messy number, but it's fine. The mean does not need to be a number that's actually in the data set. And since the formula involves division, decimals are common. It's extremely important that you pay attention to the SAT questions instructions when you get a decimal answer. If they tell you to round to a specific digit, make sure you follow that instruction or you will get the question wrong. If they don't tell you to round, then follow the general instructions for student produced response questions. Remember that you can also answer with fractions. And in this case, 150 over 7 would be perfectly fine to submit as your answer. One of the SAT's most common tricks is to take a process that you know very well in one direction and reverse it so that you have to work backwards in some way. But luckily, our main SAT math strategy will help us when they do this with means and averages. Just remember that our main goal is to plug points into equations. For mean and average, the SAT expects us to have the equation memorized. So we're always halfway there to using this strategy if we have the formula memorized. Let's look at an example where this would be helpful. The five starting players on a basketball team scored an average of 14 points per player. How many total points did the starting players score? Since the question is talking about an average, I know to start plugging values into the average formula. In this case, they gave me the average to start, which is 14. They also told me that there are five players on the team, which represents the number of numbers in the data set. Out of habit, when I see an equation with a missing piece, I solve for that piece. So it makes sense to find the sum of the numbers, even if I have no idea what purpose it serves. Multiply both sides by five to find that the sum is 70. Based on the story, this is actually the answer to the question, since the total number of points would correspond to the sum of the player's individual scores. We don't need to know the individual point totals for each player to get the total for all of the players, which is great for us because it's impossible to know each player's individual points. Using the average formula as a way to organize the plug points into equation strategy helps us avoid worrying about something like the individual player scores, which we can never know. Remember that the formula for average and mean is an essential piece of SAT knowledge. It is never given to you. It must be memorized. Moving on, the median is the second most important statistical measure we'll see on the SAT. Basically, the median is the middle number of the data set. When you have the list, you can cross off one number from each side until you reach the middle. So in this case, the median is 21. But the set must be arranged in order from least to greatest. In this set of three numbers, the median is not 47 just because it happens to be the middle number in the list. We need to reorder the list to see that the actual median is 41. Jumbling the list is one of the SAT's most common traps for questions about the median. Median is a bit tricky when the data set has an even number of values. In this four numbered list, there isn't a single middle number. When this happens, find the two middle values and get their average. In this case, the average of 78 and 79 is 78.5, so the median of the set is 78.5, even though that specific number does not appear in the data set. There is another way to find the median that is a bit more formulaic. The list still needs to be in order, but instead of counting from both ends, you can count from just one. If n is the number of values in the data set, then you need to count to the term that would be n plus 1 over 2. So in this example, the set has seven terms. 
Plugging seven in for n, we get eight over two, which is four. We can count to the fourth term, which is still a median of 21. This method might be more useful when the data set is large, especially when it's presented in a histogram or frequency chart. However, it still gets annoying when the data set has an even number of values. In this second example, the formula would tell us to find term number 2.5, which clearly doesn't make sense. But you could remember that it's asking us to find the value between terms 2 and 3, which would once again be a median of 78.5. Personally, I don't like this method for finding the median. I worry that the formula itself is hard to remember, and that people who use it are likely to say that the median is the result of the formula, so 4 and 2.5, instead of 21 and 78.5. But it's up to you. Do whatever works and prevents careless mistakes. Mode is extremely easy to explain and to find. The mode is the most common number. You can remember that easily because the words mode and most both start with the letters MO. In our example, the mode is 19 because there are two 19s and only one of every other value. It's worth noting that a set can have multiple modes or it can have zero modes. Honestly, the SAT does not ask about the mode very often but you should still memorize it just in case, and so that you don't confuse it with mean and median. Finally, the range is also very easy to find. The range is found with a simple formula. Find the maximum value in the data set, then subtract the minimum value in the set. In this case, the greatest value is 26, and the smallest value is 17, so the range is 26 minus 17, which is nine. It's important to note that the range is a single value. Many people would describe the range of this set as 17 to 26, but that's not really what we mean from a statistical point of view. Just do the subtraction. Another set with completely different numbers could have the same range as this set, even if its maximum and minimum are different numbers. Like I said at the beginning of the lesson, memorizing these four concepts should get you through most statistics questions on the SAT. But to give you another way to think about them, it's helpful to group them by what they tell us about a set. Mean, median, and mode are three different ways of understanding the middle or center point of a data set. They will almost always be different values, but they still attempt to summarize a data set by focusing on some sort of middle. The range, on the other hand, is trying to describe the spread or endpoints of a data set. Standard deviation is also a way to understand the spread of a data set, but that's a separate lesson, and it's worth watching if you want to answer some of the more difficult statistics questions on the SAT. I hope that this lesson was enough to get you started. Thanks for watching.